G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpig. We've got problems, big problems. Quite a few of them coiled up here on a pallet. That's right, we don't want to find ourselves on the high seas being tied down by anything. And we certainly don't want to string you along. All right, all right, I'll stop dragging the chain. All of us on Brewpig have a dream, a vision if you will. And it doesn't include shit everywhere. So today's job is using a little bit of stainless and fancy TIG work and we're gonna tuck our junk away. We've taken a sunken fishing trawler and converted her to a community funded expedition and research boat crewed by volunteers from around the world. Because life's too short not to fight for your dream. In our anchor room, up front, we've got some lovely ribs on either side and a heap of space. Oh, but before we do that, I think we'll be turning around and having a look at that guy. Look at that wee fella. It's probably poisonous, it's Australia. It's probably got teeth, I don't know. Come on fella, out you go. In Brewpig's anchor room, we've got quite a lot of storage up in these corners, but it's impossible to use unless we do something with it. Our something is going to be some one inch box section with a bit of chain welded to the end. We're going to TIG weld these onto the ribs and then large ropes and coils of things, bungee etc can be hooked up onto these stainless beams and then at the bottom on the rib we're going to weld another piece of chain so that we can put a bit of bungee or a small string around the bottom and tie them all off so that in a seaway they don't start rocking back and forth or coming out like this. We're also going to protect the paint on these ribs with some pipe so that we don't have chafage issues on either the rope or the paint in this part of the boat. Bro, you probably can't stay there, you might get stood on. In fact, let's just move you so you don't get stood on. Much safer. You just hang out there, buddy. George has come to say hello on his way up the coast. Hi, guys. Having a bit of a look around. Yeah, amazing. Absolutely amazing. Lifetime experience. This is now driving to be sanded. Cat's just currently making sure everything's in order. Uh, what have we got? Oh. Bottle over there. We're about to change that over to TIG so we can show Bjerk how to weld. Uh, he's getting this head around TIG welding up the front. Um, Bjerk's getting a drone out. Uh, I'll go to doing some work at the kitchen. And Jess over there. Hello. <laughs> um, so these guys are just clearing up and organising heaps of stuff so that when people come on board they know where things are. So Dave and I have already been into town. We've organised the um, prop shaft adapter. A few other things, picked up a few things. Uh, I've organised everyone into the uh, a lot of jobs. So you, you can see here, everyone has their areas, and Dame just makes sure that everyone has parts and understands techniques and requirements and all like that. But guys are just amazing, so fast and thorough and moon so fast. So we're getting we're getting it done. So this is really the week, um, and I'm in editing. Carlos is getting some grey up the front. This is the etch that we use. So anywhere that's been sanded, Margot's gone through and sanded, Carlos is throwing some etch on top just so that we can seal it up because the rain is probably going to be here in, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. We've got lots of little parts to build, stainless brackets, mild and stainless mainly. So I'm teaching Birk how to TIG weld, DC TIG weld. I'll stay with the AC stuff for now, but he's going to start taking over some of the DC stuff. So that's any of our stainless, any of our mild, and mainly so that we can start like spreading some of that workload and, and get more done. We've got two welders, two DC capable TIG welders, really good ones. I'll show you what we're working on. Birk's currently cleaning up a whole bunch of tungstens, and then we've got some stainless plate and some stainless bar. This is going to become rope holders in the anchor locker and this is going to become mounts for our water pump. So on Brewpig we've got tanks up the front of the boat. So we've got our crash bulkhead in this area here. That's basically an air tank that's used in case we smack into anything. That can rupture and not damage the rest of the boat. We won't sink. We'll have a hole in the front but it won't sink the boat. The next tank along this one here, it goes right up to the deck level which is up about here somewhere. So from there down to the keel. That's fuel storage. There's one on this side of the boat, one on the other side, split down the centre line. The next is a very narrow air tank and that's called a cofferdam and it separates the fuel tanks here with the water tanks here. Now the water tanks go again up to the deck, just, just about two feet above the waterline there. 
and they come all the way down. So those two water tanks are about 3,000 litres each, roughly. And the cofferdam in this area here is where our water pump and everything is going to be sited. Water pump and everything includes things like filters, emergency taps, sight glasses, things like that, so that we can get in there and get water if we need it in an emergency, if the pumping and the electricity stops. But it also allows us to bury all of that sort of gear in one location, all the filtration, all the pumping and everything's in that one location. I want to show you something. This is how fucking awesome Birk is. Look at this. That's my, this is how you TIG weld, weld. That's his very first TIG weld. Look at the state of that. Is that not just fucking awesome? And then this one. That's his second one. <laughs> so, I think we've got ourselves our TIG welder. <laughs> so with Beck getting his head around TIG welding, my plan is to be able to start passing some of the, like, the intricate fiddly stuff, like stainless steel shrouds that have to be going on any mechanical stuff the, the belts on the front of the engine for example need a big shroud to go over them to protect hands and fingers um, things like the water pump mounts um, we've got some brackets to do in the engine room all of these things are stuff that is a tig welding job so if Beck can get his head around tig welding that's going to be phenomenal to have someone that good doing his parts on the boat <laughs> third weld so the homework was run lots of beads just do plenty of welds and we'll go through and critique each one and we can learn from there Okay, that's good. See how you've dipped it? You've got all the crap at the end of it. Yep. You need to change that out. It's got a pretty good handle now, mild steel. So um, we're trying stainless. We're going to move over to stainless now. Do the same thing. We'll do some straight beads on some flat stainless, and then we're going to start doing some T joints. It works much better when there's an earth attached. So, so adjust your head so that the, it's more straighter. Like, so hold your hand comfortable, and then spin that around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Especially with that one. Yeah. Carlos finished sanding the port side cooling pipes. Burke started preparing the anchor room ribs, ready to weld on some brackets to hold Burke's ropes. Do you want the welder? Yeah. And it's still a slight angle like yeah. that. Yeah. I think a very slight angle works quite well, eh? Yeah. That's good? Oh, yeah. Oh, earth. Uh, earth it on the stainless. That buzzing sound is not getting an earth. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, paint and other junk. Yep, awesome. Might want to check your tungsten. That sounds like a lot of junk in the world. Yep. After Burke took so well to TIG, Damien's asked him to weld these brackets in, and it's uh, not an easy task. There's no fucking gas. Oh. Did you turn the bottom back up? That's why it's never going to work. Yeah. Can you turn the power up a bit? Power up? Yep. Yeah. You're on 200. That's a lot better. I think our gas will do that. It's Are you attacking? Yeah, yeah. Nice. But it's not coming off. Yeah, nice. And probably turn the power down again. Yeah. You ready to start your runs? Yeah. I got you on about 165. Okay. Just have a check of it and see how you're feeling with it. Um, concentrate most of your heat on the rib. Want to stay a little bit longer in your post flow? Yeah. I noticed your tungsten was red when you pulled away. Yeah. 
just just hold on a little bit, couple of seconds longer. And by the way, this is to stop the argon from pulling up below so you can't breathe. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's a safety thing so you don't die. Just a small safety thing. Yeah, it's a small feature. Whenever we're welding in a tank like this, there's always a risk that argon can build up at the bottom and it fills up like essentially like water flooding the bottom. It fills up at the bottom and pushes all the oxygen out. That's bad because it stops your breathing and doing the living and so on. So we always put the vacuum cleaner sucking air from the bottom of the tank and throwing it over the side of the boat or pulling from the bottom of the tank if we've got a bung there. And it's a simple thing but it stops that argon from being able to build up. Sweet, it's never coming off. It's good. Done. Yeah, it's coming up, isn't it? I don't feel anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Birds are getting blown around. <laughs> Might need to think about um, tools, Dame, when we finish this bit. The next morning, the boat's starting to feel like a real home. Of all the magic places in the world I've been to, this is where my heart is. Oh, you know it's true, no matter where. Project today, we already sanded these pipes. We're gonna do some acetone to clean it off and then put some of the paint cover over them. This side, here, and the other side. Got the appropriate snow camo on. It's time to cook. But first, coffee. I'm the luckiest man. <laughs> and all my efforts, still pain on my head. Of course, the one spot that won't cover. That's okay. So just, just in case you're wondering how safely packaged our stuff arrives in. <laughs> that's all that's in this box. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, wicked. I need to keep that box so I'm just gonna tape it shut. All right, day two of painting the pipes here. Burke has given me this handy device from our spy gear in order to see the tops of the pipes. I definitely have to hit them again, but we got one section uh, dry and done. Clean up on those and paint them up. 
along with everything else. So I'll be in here for a little bit. cleanup is done on the uh, rope holders. So now we have to get to painting. Oh man, I just hate it when the manager is just sitting over you. While Carlos was in the bell putting the first of the top coat on the ink room, Damien and I were on the rear roof getting it ready for the first layer of top coat to be laid down in preparation for our solar panels to be installed. Oh nice. Look at that rust proof hammer. <laughs> the rust kills the hammer. Uh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Carlos is preparing to do the top coats. He's uh, masking up the stainless so it doesn't get marked. And he's going to start with striping and then he'll do the full top coat. I want to jump around when I think about yesterday. Your smile, your style, so fly. My, my. Wow. First impressions. That's amazing. It's quite light, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good colour. That's new. Wow. How are you doing? Can you smell it? Are you okay? Oh, it's not bad. The mass is fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Gorgeous. Yeah. It is a nice colour. Yeah, it's a really nice colour. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I thought it was going to be dark like this grey. Yeah, yeah, I was thinking it would be greyer. Yeah, it's more like a half white. Yeah, it's lovely. I think that will look nice on the top deck. I think it will, yeah, yeah. I'm mixing together here the two-part paint for the roof. This one in particular is a four-to-one ratio. All right, second part of the painting. You see the most dramatic change today. So I edged up yesterday. And of course our table for two is still here. What are you up to out here? So I'm doing um, the edge and I'm doing again the back of uh, this back on the left because I found uh, on the first layer uh, there were some bubbles so I was not enough uh, satisfied. So I do it again and, uh, and yeah, after this one will be finished. So we need to get this chaos tucked away nicely in the anchor locker. 
So next step is to go through and sort all of these various ropes. What have we got? These three coils here, these are our mooring ropes with um, throwing lines. So we've got a small black uh, rope with a monkey's fist. That's a monkey's fist there. It's basically just a big ball of ropes. So you can add a bit of weight or momentum. And you throw this across to the wharf and then you pull this bigger line across. So these are awesome for mooring or if you have an arch enemy that you need to deal with. The next one. Hello. <laughs> Okay, the next ones we've got a couple of coils of silver rope, just general purpose rope on the boat. We've got this one here, which is an old spinnaker sheet actually, really, really long 14 mil spinnaker sheet. Not a lot of stretch, quite a lot of strength. This yellow rope was donated by Craig. This is an exceptionally long piece of nylon. Uh, we're gonna actually potentially use that as part of our anchor road. We have this coil here, and then these two coils here. We found at auction, so they're 32 mil nylon rope. They're quite long, and they're going to end up as stern anchors, one off each corner. And this one just here in front of me, that's just basically going to be a bit of spare rope. So we're going to winch these up. We're going to start coiling them into the anchor room. It's like a giant shoelace. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Wait yeah. a bit. You got room? Yep. Okay. Okay, so that's one rack just about taken up. the twisting of the rope makes it quite hard if you don't stretch it out like this. This was donated by Craig. Thank you, Craig. I remember waking up in the morning and going down to the bottom of the boat to do some work on the hull and finding this pretty much on the doorstep.
Burke and Dame are working on the ropes, getting them in the anchor locker. Carlos is up on the roof, finishing spot painting with Etch anywhere we've missed. A lovely blue sky today. Margot is cutting out the insulation. She's shaping it so that every space is taken up on the insulation panel, so we don't get any waste. Smaller than that. Yep. Not much. That's it. Okay. Got a little bit more space if we need it. Here we yep. go. Looking resplendent. So we ran out of space and we had to put a couple on the ground. But here we go. Coiled up on one side. We've got those nice and lovely. We're going to tie them at the bottom. Got our big anchor bucket in the middle. And we've got our coils on this side. Well, I think that worked really well.